Hello and welcome back to the Mike Pecky's Coaches Show. I'm your host, Brian Dunseth. The man over there with the earpiece that is awkwardly hanging out is the coach, Mike Pecky. Mike, how you doing, man? I'm great. Another Tuesday night getting off at 600 North and going east, buddy. I'm, I'm living, <laughs> Have you living figured the that confusing out? dream. Have you figured that out yet? I'm choosing not to figure it out. Six blocks north. I enjoy the mystique and the Couple. intrigue. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm going to let this ride as long as I could. All right, you got some big shoes to fill. Now, Laura was fantastic last week. Um, you got a week, uh, no, no games at the weekend. You feel a little rejuvenated coming back here? First of all, Laura was fantastic. She I was. Caught the I caught the show, and it's the first time in, was it five weeks or four weeks? I think we're week five now. Week five. It's the first time in five weeks that I actually watched it a second time. That's how impressed I was. All right, all so right. So kudos to, to Laura. I hope uh, you're not going to take my job, uh, but it, it was great to have her do that. Um, weekend was great, a little bit with the family. Um, relaxing, got to obviously what you're about to talk about, I'm sure. Yeah. Go see yeah. a special game this weekend. So it was a good weekend off. Well, let's, let's start with that. Laura and the Royals from this past weekend. I was there, you were there. Uh, incredible atmosphere, uh, not only for the franchise as a club, but I think Salt Lake City in general as a whole. Uh, but you sent out a tweet that really caught my eye. Uh, here's Mike Pecky's tweet, at Pecky Mike. I keep hearing, quote, what a great day for women's sport. Unquote. And I totally agree, but I believe it's so much more. I say, quote, what a great day for sports as a whole, end quote. History at the riot, so proud of Laura Harvey, Utah Royals, and Mr. Hansen, so proud of Laura and the team. I, it caught my attention, obviously, because it, you, I think you did a ton of due diligence to not only the day itself and kind of the pomp and the circumstance of the first game at Rio Tinto Stadium for the Royals, but I think you bring attention and light to kind of a subject that is so easily dismissible. Um, so yeah. why, why, was, why was that? What goes through your mind to get to that point where you sit there and you say, I'm going to tweet about this because <laughs> it does carry so much weight. Yeah. Um, well, it's interesting. There's a lot of things that go through my mind. First of all, I mean, my wife, who's sitting behind the camera, who's being very angry with me right now, <laughs> um, she's a former uh, soccer player, yeah. you know, a high-level soccer player. Uh, I don't have any daughters. We've talked about this before. I'm not blessed to have any daughters, but I have two wonderful sons who enjoy watching the U.S. Women's National Team yeah. and NWSL when it's on TV. Um, and it really, what the tweet said is why I did it. I continue to see what a great day women's, for women's sports, what a great day for women's this and that. And I agree completely. But uh, you, don't, you don't hear when RSL is playing or, or when um, uh, Major League Baseball, what a great day for men's, men's sports. sports yeah. I think, it, I think with, it takes away a little bit of the of the um, importance of it, to be honest with you. And I just wanted to, you know, I'm impulsive, so I throw something out there like that, <laughs> and, and, and I'm hoping that people uh, appreciate it. I it's true. I, I think because you and I um, have been a part of, I call it the dick buckish years of Major League Soccer, <laughs> the building block years. Yeah. When, when we were playing and we knew the salaries were basically going to get us check to check as yep. opposed to now looking at guys who are capable of retiring. I need more money than Brian. <laughs> That's no, I probably didn't. true. No, I didn't. Um, but for, for a situation like this where Rio Tinto Stadium was packed, I was there, I, ha I had my Royals jersey on, I was walking through the crowd, I went to the team store, I wanted to buy some stuff for my kids. I, I just thought it was really, really important when you look at the struggles that the league has had over the years and the different names and the different iterations, the different financial backers, to have a day like that, especially for a majority of the women who are coming from a, a club that was basically not just relocated, but mm -hmm. a, a club that was on the verge of collapse. And I think it struck a nerve for me being a, a part of the Miami Fusion and contraction mm -hmm. and what that looked like back in the day. So as, as a family man, when yep. you can take yourself away from it as a coach, as a family man, what what... What does a day like that speak to, to your sons and, and to your wife? Well, again, you know, it was great to be there uh, with my family, with my wife and kids. You know, I, I saw a little extra excitement in my wife's eye. Obviously, she's a woman. Obviously, she used to play. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we're, we're all soccer fans. We're all sports fans. Um, and it did bring me back a little bit to the early days of Major League Soccer, you know, like yeah. as you just addressed. Ten teams in a league right now. You know, you and I went through it. Is that you didn't know if the league was going to fold or not. Uh, and to see where this league has come now. But to me, it's interesting because you look at how uh, the Utah Royals are made up. 
you could argue there's three or four of the best players in the world. Uh -huh. That's like saying on the men's side, I'm going to go see Barcelona play this weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and to see that support come out there, to see um, all the work that Laura's done, you know, all the work those players have done, uh, all the stuff that the lawyers put into this, you know, to see that stadium filled like that. Um, funny story, we were driving, um, my son had a game. And we had to rush out of the, my son's game as soon as it ended to get there, hopefully in time. And we saw the helicopter, we're on 15, we saw yeah. the helicopters coming from the flyover. And it got pretty much just at the stadium. All of a sudden, they went around. And we didn't know why. Uh -huh. We said, all right, we got to live on. We're trying to get there. And we found <laughs> we'll, out about we'll, the, we'll, we found out we'll about the national anthem. That. We will address that <laughs> later in the show. But listen, it, it, it was an unbelievable day. I, I mean, I'm, I'll talk about it as much as you want. It was an unbelievable day. It was a dream realized from Deloitte Hansen um, for all the, not, not just the little girls uh, in the state of Utah, but my son the boys as well for yeah. people in general who love sports who support uh, Salt Lake City it, it was a huge day um, really quick I, I know you've done this with Briggsy a few times with the Monarchs playing inside the stadium what was it like seeing Laura for her opportunity to step on the field it was awesome you know I mean everybody you know we've talked about it enough I have a, I have a really good relationship with Laura mm -hmm. you know and, and there's a lot of reasons why um, we talked about it a couple of shows ago when she was on just her humbleness you know her coming in she's part of the family now she's a great coach um, before every game that I've had so far, uh, she's texted me, you know, good luck and anything yeah. you need. Um, and I was, it was very exciting for me. I did it for the first two away games as well, but it was very exciting for me going to that stadium to, to send her a little message, just telling her to enjoy the moment, yeah. you know, and having her respond back. And you could tell that she was so excited. Uh, I'm extremely happy for her and all the players. Yeah. Uh, Mike, we, we constantly, I guess, talk about rivalry and with a big game coming up this weekend against the Colorado Rapids. I, I was... I was fascinated. You you took part in the Rocky Mountain Cup, but you were the enemy. Mm -hmm. um, and and there were some massive, massive battles. I mean, playoff implications on the line. Who was in? Who was out? The trophy absolutely means something to the supporters. But before we get to there, how how does someone like yourself, who was so invested emotionally as a player with rivalries, yeah. crime of the century, guys <laughs> that you absolutely hated, um, how do you define what a rivalry is, maybe as a player, but now also as a, as a manager? I honestly, my definition of a rivalry is a couple of things. It has to, it has to be history, mm. you know? And, and that's why when NYCFC came in, when I was with, uh, right before at my end, when I was in New York, um, when LAFC just came in, I feel that media or, or perhaps the league, in a sense, tries to create something yeah. before it creates yeah. itself. You know, but then I look back at my early days, my biggest rivalry was DC United, which was a seven hour drive or a f hour flight. Yeah. You know, um, there has to be some bad blood. There has to be some sort of history. And, and that, that can't start until you get on the field. Yep. You know, I mean, the fights that I had with Jaime Moreno and Marco Echeverri when I was in New York, they were on DC. You know, looking at the Cascadia Cup, which goes back, you know, yeah. way Eons. before MLS. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's a true rivalry. Um, and I think that. Rocky Mountain Cup is something special because the Rocky Mountains are separating the two cities, the two closest cities. And that started in the early days and there wasn't much glitz and glamour to it. Now it's become something a bit different. So for me, there has to be history. There has to be some sort of incident that, have ha that has happened, you know, small, large or whatever. But yeah. there has to be something that, that, that puts its stamp on it. Uh, Rocky Mountain Cup was created by the fans. You play for a trophy. How does the locker room uh, do, do you get a sense of how important this is for the locker room? For uh, for a lot of the guys, absolutely. Yeah. You know, someone, let, let's just pull a name out of the hat, uh, Demir Krylic. Yeah. You know, he He's just got here. Sure. You know, to sit down with him and say, hey, Demir, yeah. they, 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 they're a two-hour <laughs> two flight away from yeah. us, but they're our biggest rivals, yeah. all right? Yeah. This has to feel it's special like to you. It's not like Union Berlin against yeah. the Hertha Berlin. Exactly, it's, where it's you can throw different. rock from each stadium. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so you can't just make him feel that way you know but how he feels that way is first is from hearing from guys like kyle like nick like tony beltran who, who have been a part of this from me because i've been a part of it and then to get out in that field and 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 hopefully there's a little bit of bad blood and, yeah, yeah, yeah you know and, and, and hold on and by the way when, when you when, I, I wish you guys could have seen this as he goes you know hopefully there's a, a little bad blood <laughs> i just i just want you to know there's oh like, look at you it. can see you can see it start <laughs> you to go see it all. Oh, a little, <laughs> Bad blood. A little bad blood. So yeah, I mean, I, it's it's something that you know. You, we talked about passion, you and I, you know, a number of times on the radio, yeah. you know, last year and stuff. You can't just look at someone and say, "I want you to be passionate," and then he goes, <laughs> and then he's passionate. It doesn't work that way. So he, you know, the, the players who have been around this feel it, and the players who get here are going to feel it very quickly by the conversation with the other players and by feeling the game. Uh, okay, so take Colorado out of it. Is is I guess who is RSL's big? So for me, 
Uh, before I get to you, I, I think of Sporting Kansas City. I think of, um, and that was because of preseason, a little confrontation with Roger Espinosa, mm -hmm. Javier Morales, and Andy Williams, and I think that escalated to kind of a, a Benny Fellhaber and Espinosa, Kyle Beckerman rivalry. I think about the playoff series against Seattle Sounders. I think yeah. about LA Galaxy. Those become rivalries, but they're 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 not they're not like big rivalries that you would expect. So if you take kind of Colorado out of it, is there is there one team in your mind that is kind of, oh, I love the look you just gave. For me, yeah. Yeah, go for we it. Only play, we only play them once a year, though. Let's hear it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm, those words will not come out of my mouth. Okay. People can piece together. Right. They're not in our conference. All right. We play them once a year. Okay. Um, take me back. <laughs> I love what you just did right there. Kind of joking. Like, I, I got kind, kind of, of like tears of eyes. Kind of joking. Um, take me back to you as a player. I, I remember it was almost as if you would like hype yourself up for matches and you'd make it personal. And it was almost as if like someone had done something to your family or <laughs> to your sister or had, 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 had gotten underneath your skin in some way, somehow, that you wanted to kill this person. <laughs> uh, when you go back in the day, who, who, was, who was Mike Pecky's biggest rival on the field? Who was oh the guy you loved to battle with? Mamadou Diallo. Uh, uh, kind of the century. Early days was probably <laughs> Jaime Moreno because yeah. he was so good and so good. he could get under your skin because yeah. he's that dry sense of humor. Um, I would say for certain those, I mean, I remember I had a couple of run-ins with Eddie Johnson. I remember Clint Dempsey, his rookie year, mm. uh, when he came to D.C., when I was playing in D.C., I just wanted to get into his head somehow, and, and I didn't know how. And so, for some reason, this came out of my mouth, and it worked. You're going to okay. love this. He got a little too close to me. I think he was marking me. And I go, you see, you're wearing cologne, buddy? That smells good. That's what I said to him. And, it li and it right away, up. he goes, no, I'm not wearing cologne. What are you talking about? <laughs> it was amazing. And I was like, wow, that was easy, you know? Now, flash forward now, that would never work on him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Jaime Moreno was huge because it's so good. Roy Lasseter, mm, remember? The dog. You marked him, the dog. Yeah, he used to dog. bark when yeah. he scored. <laughs> <laughs> he used to bark when he was doing sit-ups. He was a wacko. <laughs> um, there was a lot of little rivalries, but probably, probably Diallo, yeah. you know? Definitely. It's just because of Mike Allman? Because of Mike Allman, yeah, I think that, but then again, I'm someone that looks for that edge, looks for something yeah. to happen, you know, and I, and I react naturally how I do, and then afterwards sitting back, and I'm saying, yeah, I don't like that guy, yeah. you know, you know, for whatever reason, you know, and it just keeps me going. So what about, I've been, I've been lucky enough to be on the sideline and been calling games, whether it be like, you know, at the little podium for NBC or down there in the midst of, of sideline action for Fox, and the jawing between managers. <laughs> You've got a manager that'll, that'll ride a referee like Seabiscuit for 90 minutes, looking for every single call, throw-ins, tackles, getting in the head of the fourth official, anything that gives him an edge, or at least puts the referee in kind of a needling, uncomfortable spot. Or then you have kind of the history between the two managers that have either played against each other mm -hmm. or ro were roommates with each other. Is, is there, is there a, a, a Mike Pecky coaching rival? Is there a guy that just gets under your skin? <laughs> There's a lot sorry, of guys is, who get under my skin. Are there a few guys that get under your skin? There's a handful that get, to be, uh, if I'm being honest, I know we're kind of talking tongue in cheek and joking a little. There's a, there's a lot of managers that get under my skin, yeah. to be quite honest with you. Um, there's a ton of managers that, that do not, and, and I have a close relationship with. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna obviously name the ones that get under my okay, skin. Give me, give me an example. What, what would a manager do in the heat of the moment during a game? Is it? Is no. it trying to get like a player sent off? Is it is it just moaning to the referee constantly? To be quite honest with you, there's nothing that uh, there's nothing. I'm trying to remember. There might have been one once or twice in my four in my uh, four almost four years of coaching, yeah. uh, but nothing really during the game. For me, it's about watching them leading up to the game. Okay, it's about knowing them and knowing their personality. Okay. you know this is a. This, to me, it's sort of a, it should be, and it's sort of a brotherhood. It's 20 something, 20 years in the yeah. making, this club, this uh, organization at Major League Soccer. You know, we should all be, there should all be a personal relationship, to be honest with you. And if there's not, there should be a mutual respect. And to be honest with you, I quite, I, I feel, and I know a lot of coaches that I know and I respect and are somewhat my age, there's an old boys club. You know, and there are a lot of younger guys in the old boys club. Yeah. You know, and I'm cool with that. You know, but. But when you get, you, you sense that arrogance, you sense that, that you didn't go to this school or you didn't play for this level, you know? I just want to go over and... and, and or you didn't play underneath this coach as yes, a player. I, I, 
And this you is what the Mike Pecky show about. And you saying weren't too on much, this right? coaching staff underneath the <laughs> But this is what this show is about, yeah. saying too much, right? No, 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 no. Okay. No, about, about so it's I've personal. already said yeah. too much, but th there's nothing that a coach does because God knows that I'm a lunatic on the sideline. You know, so how could I say I don't like the way he acts during the game? Yeah. You know, again, there's been one or two instances, but to me, it's all about knowing personalities, you yeah. know, knowing guys that I could pick up the phone right now and call Patrick Vieira, for instance. Yeah. I sp talked, spoke to him for 45 minutes before a game against NYC. Talked to him down. Gentlemen, by the way. Talked with him down in preseason for a while. Was mad at me when I, after the game because I didn't call him when I got there. We said we were going to have a glass of wine or something like that when I came to New York. Just, this is a guy who played at Arsenal. Yeah, this is a guy who played at event. No, you know, no. the highest level. Won a World yeah. Cup. I mean, that, to me, that's awesome. Takes yeah. his time, knows things. You know, so to me, it go, it, like I said, it's more about it's more about the arrogance of some people and, and, and the attitude of some people. And so rivalries, no, but a bit of dislike, absolutely. So a couple weeks ago, we were talking about Greg Vanny. We were talking about Toronto Great City. Guy. We were talking about Robin Frazier, Dan Kalichman, yep. the, the whole crew, um, and a lot, of, a lot of history between those guys. Talking about rivals, um, I know they're not a direct rival, but because they've been so successful, in a situation like Toronto FC and the run that they're in in CONCACAF Champions League, is it is it socially acceptable to support Toronto FC in the final? I mean, because we had we had MLS for RSL yeah. when they were in the midst yeah. of playing Monterey. Uh, obviously, Montre uh, Montreal's run a couple years ago. But is it does it feel right or does it feel wrong to be able to support Toronto FC to kind of carry the flag for Major League Soccer? To me, this is my personal opinion, yeah. and, and I'll get into why. I think it's extremely fine, and I, I'm, I'm, me, I'm rooting right now. I have it paused. Talk to you. Yeah. I have it paused I ruined, at home. I ruined half. Yeah. Time you ruined half time for me. I don't want to know what the score is now. We have it paused at home because I want them to succeed, hmm. and there's, there's selfish reasons why I want them to, and there's there's other reasons. First reason is Robin Frazier, close personal friend incredible of mine. Person, yeah. Incredible person. Incredible, incredible person. Did so much for me when when we coached together, and now he's doing the same thing for Greg. Greg Vanny, unbelievable guy. Mm. Uh, another one of the coaches that I could point out that would reach out to me. You know, any advice? You know, An give me feedback. Instrumental in Real Salt Lake was starting the academy. Instrumental down in Real Salt Lake. Growing. So from a personal standpoint, yeah. I'm rooting for him. But then you also have to look at this. The league is 20 years old. 20 years old. We have never had a team make it to the, the uh, World Club Championships, yeah. correct? L LA Galaxy qualified, but Qual that was when they shut down the tournament because something happened, and that's why they that was like that, that was the, that was the Stone Age. Yeah, that was Ziggy <laughs> Schmidt and Danny Kaler yeah. playing, yeah, 2000. I mean, now we're talking about... It's completely different. What could that do for this league? Mm -hmm. What could that do for, selfishly, for RSL? Yeah. You know, that Toronto goes on and they do well in the Club World Championship, and all of a sudden... Now more agents are calling. Yeah. Bigger name players want to come. And it's going to put us a bit more on the map. We're still, as, as far as this, this league has come, and you and I talk about it a lot, it's come uh, astronomically, mm -hmm. you know, over the last 20 years. But we're still a blip on the radar, yeah. if you really look at it. Something like this is what we need now. And then it's going to stoke the rivalry with Mexico a little bit more now that we hopefully win it this year. Changes the narrative, C yeah. Changes it completely. So, yes, I think it's fine. Now, do... If, if we had 100 years of history, you know, and, and, and Barcelona, the Barcelona yeah. MLS and the Real Madrid of MLS, no, I, no one I'm sure. The, I wouldn't expect that to happen. <laughs> We're not there yet, you yeah. know? So I think it's going to be good for this league. I hope that people in this league understand that and they're rooting for them. I certainly am. Um, well, we'll finish tonight's show with this social media gem. Uh, this was from Mike Pecky's Twitter account earlier this oh, morning. Oh, Lord. At Pecky Mike. Uh, attention, RSL players. An email and text has been sent out to you all. In case you missed it, I know you'll be on Twitter. Due to the snow, we have moved training to Harriman. Drive safe. Hashtag social media has use after all. That is top notch right there. I, I giggled out loud. I actually told my wife, I was like, get over here. I don't think I've ever seen a manager use Twitter. Oh, I'm sure they just have. To, not in this realm, just to make sure, like, guys, make sure you're on time. Make sure you realize that we've changed. Check your emails. Check your texts. Well, there's a little bit of a backstory to it, okay. right? Very, very briefly. Yesterday, the snow's report comes in, and, I, and we, me and the staff sit around and goes, this is sand. It's not going to snow. Yeah. You know, it's going to rain. Eventually, we're going to be fine. No one likes to go on turf. We don't want to go indoor. We want to be yeah. outside. So I had said to the field guy and said to my administrator, we'll be at AFF tomorrow. You know? Of course, I wake up, and it's a blizzard, pretty Whoops. much. And there's like three <laughs> inches. So I sent Tim at 8.30 this morning, you have to make sure all the players know. So Tim sent out an email or a text, and I'm sitting there going, driving to Harriman, I'm going, 
what if one person doesn't get it? Yeah. And then I just look, I'm like, they're all on Twitter. So yeah. I, that, that was pretty much it, you know? <laughs> and uh, it does, social media does have its use. And, Has its perks. And that's one of them. Oh, I, by the way, I love, and we haven't touched on it, I love the fact that you kind of took your selfie on the train Oh, <laughs> on the subway, heading up to. That's my New York. I, I, mi I missed the, I missed the four train. That it was, was good old days. It was, it was fun. It was interesting. By the way, so this tweet actually got me thinking. Let's challenge our viewers. You can start with a tweet. Make sure you just say "attention, Mike and Dunny," and end it with the hashtag "failed pecky tweets." Our what? producer Tyler wrote an example to give you some guidance. Yeah, so, I need an example because I'm more. Uh, attention, Mike and Dunny. Do you think Rachel Platten knows the lyrics to "O oh, Canada"? Hashtag Tyler, failed. Tyler, you could do a little better than that, buddy. <laughs> That's not bad, though. Well, you could do a little better than that. Well, we, we, we know uh, she doesn't remember the fight song to the entire country of the United States. So uh, hey, yeah, get, get it at us. Uh, give us your best ones. Again, failed my, uh, pecky tweets. Uh, and at the best ones at the end of the show next week, we'll make sure we'll, uh, we'll get them in. Sorry about this. OK, get it over here. What's up, big man? You good? Yeah. Sit down. All right. So that that was exquisite. My man. Say hello to the world. Just just do say hello to the world. Hello. Well, gotta introduce yourself. Well, you could just do what I do to him. This is my son Mason. You could do what I do. Just ignore him, and he'll just he'll he'll have fun. He'll do his own thing. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Thanks for joining us. See you uh, at the riot Great this Saturday. Man. Colorado Rapids, Rocky Mountain Cup. Be there early.